Okay, so our next speaker, Angelia Joyner, we're still dealing with uh, the Stevensville case. Uh, as you know, January the 8th, 2008, Stevensville gained national media attention when dozens and later hundreds of residents reported observations of unidentified flying objects. And according to reports, residents observed several types of UFOs, the descriptions ranging from triangular-looking craft to discs. Several residents described the craft as the size of a football field, while others said that they were nearly a mile long, similar to the historic Arizona mass sightings of March 1997. And uh, some observers also reported military craft pursuing the objects. CNN's Larry King was the one television show that actually covered the news story in days following the incident. And the report was based on radar data obtained from the FAA and using the FAA radar information. The detailed report tracked F-16 flight paths as well as an unknown object in the same area and time as seen by multiple witnesses. And at that time, inquiries made about the UFO incident were very much stonewalled by the United States Air Force. Angelia Joyner is the reporter who broke the news, as you know, of multiple UFO sightings over Stevensville, Texas, and has continued her quest for answers as to what is going on in our skies. She's recognized internationally for a straightforward, factual reporting on this topic, which has brought accolades from around the world. Two appearances on Larry King Live at conferences, and too many to mention live radio interviews. She was named UFO Digest 2009 UFO Reporter of the Year for her outstanding work in bringing the Stevensville UFO events to national and international attention. Angelia continues to do many interviews across the nation. Most recently, she appeared in James Fox's I Know What I Saw and Discovery Channel's Investigation X. Angelia worked closely with ABC producers on UFOs Seeing is Believing, which aired in 2008 and resulted in a special thank you credit. The MUFON UFO Network Texas branch recognized her in 2008 as the organization's lead investigative reporter. And she consulted with Robert Powell, MUFON National Research Director, and Glenn Schultz, radar analyst on the Stephenville radar report, which confirms an unknown object in the sky on the now infamous night. Please welcome Angelia Joyner. Thank you. I'm really honored to be here. I think it's so wonderful that we have this conference going on in my neck of the woods. Um, I've already met a lot of you, and uh, if I haven't met you yet, I hope to. Um, I just think this is a wonderful turnout for the, the first year, and I just want to thank you so much for, for, for being here and uh, enjoying this conference. And thanks so much to Paula for putting it all together. So, Stephenville changed my life, and it changed a lot of people's lives. Whoop, too far. Before this January sighting, Stephenville was known basically for high school football. Um, about four times in the 90s, the high school football team uh, were the state champions and known for dairies, uh, the number one milk producing uh, county in Texas, and known for cowboys, professional rodeo cowboys. The guy you see over there on the right, um, Ty Murray, he's been about a seven-time world champion, and uh, for some reason, uh, a lot of these guys have congregated in, in Stephenville and the surrounding area, um, calf ropers, bull riders, uh, bronc riders, all of them. Uh, there's just so many that, that live there. And uh, so we got the nickname Cowboy Capital of the World. And then on January the 8th, 2008, all of that changed. In Selden, Texas, there were four friends that were gathered uh, about sunset, 
and they saw something absolutely extraordinary. Then we were known for something else. UFOs. Ah, I'm not used to this. <laughs> so this, this was sort of the a general attitude um, around the town. What's everybody talking about? What UFO? Um, except for the ones that saw it. And they knew, you know, they knew what, what was up. But uh, those four friends in Selden changed the direction um, for a lot of us. And I'll never forget the afternoon that I was at the newspaper and Steve Allen called. And uh, like most witnesses, he started out. Now, I, I want to tell you about something, but I don't want you to think I'm crazy or anything like that. You know, they kind of <laughs> preface it like that, and they wait to get your response to see if you're going to, oh, okay, you know, you're going to make fun of them, or are you really going to listen? I said, okay, what have you got? And he started telling about this amazing thing. Now, on... On this, what you're seeing is, this is Stephenville right here. Here's Dublin right here, where it says Constable. That's Leroy's home. And this one really got me excited because I have a lot more than just two data points on this one. I got like 12 to 15. When I, when I talked to Leroy about what he saw, he described to me these objects southwest of his home that were that were large reddish orange that they sat there and they seemed to be fairly motionless. Well what was really neat was on radar I've got these objects that are basically just sitting there and they're southwest of his home about that's about two miles from where he lives and that's almost identical to what Leroy told me. Now Rich if you speed it up just a little bit yeah right about there Okay, so you can see the UFO still down there. And maybe speed it up a little bit more. Yeah, right there. Okay, while all this is going in, uh, Leroy goes back into his home, I th if I remember it right, Leroy, to tell your wife and your son. And uh, I saw his wife back there, but I, I don't think you could convince her to, to get off the couch or, or from watching TV, whatever was going on. But his son went with him. And... Uh, so when he goes back out, those, those uh, UFOs that he saw that are sitting still are not sitting still anymore. And Rich, if you move it just a little more, maybe uh, another a third of the way towards the end, get near 127 right here. These numbers were at 125 on the lower left. Okay, see that jump? Okay, Leroy had told me that this object suddenly just took off, and he described it at the speed of light. I mean, he was exaggerating, but he said they went towards Dublin faster than he could follow them with his binoculars. Well, that's exactly what happens right here. We get the next data point over Dublin. And the speed of this, because I can calculate it off the radar, was 2,000 miles per hour. And I look up, and I step down, and then I realize what I've seen. And uh, basically, I have just walked underneath this thing like an idiot. And, uh, <laughs> you know, I, it wasn't there when I was walking down to the woods. I have no idea uh, how it got there. I just know I find myself underneath it. Uh, to answer your question, the color was like a barn metal gray, barn wood gray. Uh, it was this, if you can imagine being in woods um, with tall trees, and you look up at this thing, and as far as you can see to the edge of the, the woods, the forest, whatever you want to call it, um, I couldn't see the, the end of it. It did have cones um, going up inside of it. It startled me. I actually had a loaded gun, took it off safety, put it up to my eye, the scope. And the first thing I thought of, is it ours? What is this? 